Okay, let's talk about how to estimate percent using no calculator. So we're gonna be doing some percent problems here and we're not looking for perfect answers, okay? Of course, you wanna um, try to get as close as possible, but oftentimes you need to do some quick mental calculations to kind of give yourself a decent estimate of percent. You kind of think to yourself, you know, roughly figuring things out and you may not have your calculator on your, your phone with you so you can kind of do this. So you should be able to uh, figure out uh, roughly uh, most percent problems. And I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, good kind of mental uh, technique to approach um, estimating percent. Again, uh, you certainly need to know how to do percent problems using a calculator and I have a lot of different videos on that. But we're just gonna talk about how to get rough estimations or you know, decent estimations by estimating. I'm gonna get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program. I found the link in the description of this video. Basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Going to be launching uh, pre-calculus here shortly. Also have courses like college algebra, introductory algebra. But um, I also have many, many uh, specialty uh, math courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for, let's say, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, a teacher certification exam, nursing placement, AccuPlacer, uh, Alex, there's a ton of different reasons why people are studying uh, middle and high school mathematics to review for very important exams. So I probably have your test. Um, and if I don't, uh, drop me a line in my contact form. Just go to my website and check out my full catalog of math courses. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you that just struggle in math. I could definitely help you out. But one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is taking great math notes. Okay, this is kind of the golden rule of math. Over several decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes almost always end up with great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who are distracted by their phone or people talking to them, or maybe they're talking to other people, maybe they're catching up on work in their math class. Listen, I get it. I certainly wasn't a perfect uh, student way back in the good old days, but uh, note-taking keeps you focused, and focus is the key to success in life in terms of achieving any goal okay that's just the bottom line if you can focus you can get stuff done so if you're struggling in math ask yourself how well you're focusing okay and evidence of of your uh, paying attention being engaged and being focused on what the teacher is you know teaching is your notes okay so uh, the better your notes are that's a better indication that you're focusing excellent so um as you improve in your note-taking, because most of you can stand improvement, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's talk about estimating percent. Again, we're not looking for perfect answers. We're looking for reasonable answers, and this is something you should be able to do without a calculator, just using some basic mental math. So let's go ahead and check this out here. All right, so just kind of uh, follow along. I have three numbers, okay, 500, 628, and uh, 3,421. Okay, let's take 500 here first. And what I like to do when I'm estimating percent, and some of you might have a different way of doing it, and that's okay. I mean, as long as you're, you know, can mentally kind of do these calculations, that's what counts. Now. I'm talking about mental estimations, rough mental estimations. And you can get a little piece of paper and pencil because if you're going to take the time to get, um, you know, figure out a percent problem, you could figure it out uh, pretty, accurately, uh, pretty accurately without the aid of a calculator by just doing the same procedure that you would use with a calculator. That's a whole different discussion. So what I'm talking about is just rough you know, rough estimations. So what I like to do is uh, focus on 10%. Okay, so whatever the question is, you know, whatever percentage you're trying to figure out, let's just figure out first what's 10% of a number. Okay, now here I have three numbers, 500, 628, and uh, 3,421. And let's look at 10% of each of these numbers. So here, 10% of 500 is 50. 
Okay, see any patterns there? How about 628? What's 10% of uh, 628? It happens to be 62.8. And what's 10% of uh, 3421? It is 342.1. So what's going on here is we are moving the decimal point over one. Now there's all kinds of explanations here on, on you know, mathematically I can, you know, explain this deeper, but I just want to, we're talking about pattern recognition at this point. So we're just moving this over one and then we get 10%. Okay. So that's all we have to do. So whatever number, if you want to take 10% of it, just move it over one. That's effectively the same as finding 10%. Okay. Now, once you have 10% of a particular number, it's pretty easy to figure out other percentages. So let's take a look at 20% now of each of these respective numbers, 500, 628, and 3421. Now, 20%, the answers here is 100, okay? 20% of 500 is 100. Now, you could go and just figure out 500 times 0 0.20 or uh, make this as a fraction and do the math. But here's the thing, if 10% of 500 is 50, well, what's 20%? Well, we're just doubling the percentage, so just double this number and it becomes 100. Okay, so this is how you want to use mental mathematics. If I'm asked, hey, what's 20% of 500? Just quickly in your brain go, okay, 10% of 500 is 50. So if I double this, this is going to be 100. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the rest of these uh, prompts here. So we talked about 10% of 628 is 62.8. So 20% of uh, uh, 628 is 125.6. Now you've got decimals here, but just... You know, you can even estimate, okay? Like here, I have 62.8. Just think to your brain, 63, okay? So 63 and another 63, that's going to be 6, 126. And this is 125.6. I don't really care. This is the exact answer, 125.6. If you told me 126 roughly, or I'm estimating that 20% of 628 is 126, that's perfect. It's a very good estimation. So, you know, round these decimals num numbers up. I'm just showing you here that if you have 628, okay, 10% is going to be 62.8. We talked about how to find that out by moving the decibel over, but mentally you could just think of that as 63. All right, let's take a look at 20% of 3421. It happens to be 6824, and we'll use the same strategy. We have uh, 342.1 is 10% of this number. So if I double that, it's going to be this. Now, I could just add, you know, I could take the time and go 342 and 342 and add that up. But you know what I would do? I would like, if I needed to do a fast, quick mental uh, estimation, I'd be like, okay, 342 is kind of roughly close to 350. And I know 350, uh, uh, 35 uh, times 2, I'm thinking, is going to be what? You're thinking 70, right? Or 700. Now, because I round up, this is 350. This is not, this number here is 342.1. It's a little bit less than 350. This answer, my actual answer is going to be a little bit less. And you can see here at 684.2 is going to be a little bit less than 700. So this is how you want to kind of uh, mentally uh, use estimations and just kind of drop things down or make a little adjustments to do quick mental on the fly um, estimations. Again, we're not talking about precise answers. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at 5% of these numbers. All right. Now, uh, for 500, 5% uh, 5 of 500 is 25. But if I know 10% of 500 is 50, I just take this number and divide it by two. Okay. So instead of doubling, I'm just going to cut it in half. So 50 divided by two is 25. Okay. So let's take a look at the rest of these guys here. So 5% of 628 happens to be 31.4. So if I gave you that question, right, figure out 5% of 628, uh, most of you'd be like, okay, all right, do I have to go 0.05 times 628? And that's exactly what you're supposed to do. But if I, you know, said no calculators and just get me, you know, give me a reasonable estimation, if you know 10% is 62.8, well, I just chopped that in half, okay, this 62, I can just, you know, uh, work with 62 because that's an even number. Okay, and I got 31.4, but I know it's going to be like a little bit over 30, right? Or I could take 63 and divide it by 2. So just take that and divide it by 2. It happens to be exactly 31.4.
Okay. And then over here, let's finish up with uh, the 342.1 is 10% of this number. So 5% of it, I'm just going to go ahead and do a uh, division by two. I could use 35 divided by two. I'm like, okay, 35 divided by two, 17, you know, you're figuring out rough numbers in your brain uh, to come up with estimations. And that's what, you, you know, the starting point here is to start off with 10%. Now, some of you might have other ways of figuring this out. You could use 1% um, of these particular numbers and kind of go that route. Uh, but 10%, I think, is a very good baseline number because it's so easy to get 10% of a number. You just shift over that decimal point, and then you can kind of go from there. So let's take a look at this problem, and then we'll wrap it up. So 750, okay, so let's figure out, let's estimate 8%, uh, 31%, uh, and 78%. Now, in all uh, fairness here, these are the exact answers. So 8% is 60, 31% uh, is 232.5, or in 78% is uh, 585. But let's just pretend you didn't know that, okay? So go ahead and take a moment and see if you can just kind of mentally play around with these numbers, okay? So we know that 750, 10% is going to be 75, right? So I just moved that over one time. And so 10% is 75. So go ahead and, you know, just mentally, don't even, put, you know, do any work on paper. Well, you can get a piece of a scrap paper out if you want and kind of play with this for a quick second. But let's take a look at our first um, uh, problem here. So 8%, so we know 8%, of 750 is 60. But if I know 10% is 75, I'm thinking, well, 8% is a little bit less than 10%. So my answer is going to be a little bit less than 75. So you just drop that down there some a little bit. Okay. Maybe you maybe you said 70. Well, you may be like, oh, that's a little bit off. That's not an exact uh, percentage, but you could kind of uh, get 5% and see where that's at and then kind of adjust from there. But you can see it's going to be less than 75, and our actual answer is 60, okay? Now, these are rough estimations, and one thing you could do is get an idea of what 1% of a number is and kind of, you know, do some more manipulation to get a more refined um, estimation. But if you're going to do that, if you're going to kind of take the steps to um, go through more work to get a better estimation, then there kind of comes a point in time that you're like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and actually do the math uh, on this. You can do it by hand, right? So 0 0.08 times 750, right? You can kind of figure out from there. You can do some uh, other kind of hand calculations to kind of get a more accurate um, answer for your percentage problems. So we're just doing rough, rough mental estimations. So don't get too, you know, too wrapped up. You're really looking for reasonable numbers, the numbers that mm, that are not perfect, but are reasonable. All right, so let's take a look at 31%. So we know 31% of 750 is 232.5. Again, 10%, okay, is 75 of uh, 750. So 31% is almost like 10% times three, right? That's gonna be 30%. So I take my 75 and I multiply it by three. Okay, so you're thinking, all right, 75, times three, you can just do this any kind of, any way conceptually that you know of doing this, right? So you can go like 75 at 75, that's 150, you know, in your brain, and then add another 75, so that's five, uh, that'd give me three, two, that's 225-ish, that would be 30%, okay? It's 31%, so a little bit more than 225, and look at the actual answer, it's 232.5, uh, okay? So, whatever kind of way you like to mentally calculate some rough numbers. And again, this is like uh, if you don't have a piece of paper or pencil and you, all you have is just you and your brain, right? <laughs> you kind of try to figure this out uh, mentally. All right. So let's take a look at 78%. So 78% of 750 is 585. All right. Now, how can I do this? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, right? So I'm like, all right, 10% of seven, uh, 50 is 75, okay? So 30%, we just figured out, was 225. Let's suppose we just already did that. And then I could be like, well, what's 50% of 750? So I'm kind of using other real rough things. So 750 uh, divided by uh, 2 is what? So if you don't know that, just take that. 
divided by two, that's gonna be three. Let's just practice some old basic arithmetic. Now, of course, I'm kind of pretending that I have a piece of paper here, because I actually do. So that's one, drop the five down. Two goes into 15, that's seven, that's 14. That's one, that's five, right? So 375, right? So if you needed to do it this way, 375, 375, that's 10, that's 14, that's 15, that's 750. Okay, so you could be like, all right, that's 375. That kind of add these two numbers up. So that's 10. Uh, this would give me uh, another 10. And this gives me 600. Okay, so 80% is 600. Now, this is a little bit more work, uh, uh, you know, to kind of figure out. And some of you kind of already seen 50% is going to be, this is close to, let's say you didn't want to go through the work I just went through, right? Let me just hold that thought. So 600 is pretty close to 585. Okay, this is 80%, but I'm looking for 78%. So I dropped this down a bit and you were in the high 500s. But let's say you didn't want to mess around with that 750. Okay, you're like, oh, that's just too much math to, you know, figure out. Well, then kind of conceptually round this up to 800. All right, 800 divided by two. I know that's going to be... 400 so i know half of 750 is going to be you know, a little bit less than 400 and then i know uh you know 10 percent um kind of multiply that by three you can just do really rough estimations okay that's going to be even if there was like you did ridiculous overestimations 10 percent is 75 most people should be able to come up with 225 as, a, as an estimation there but 225 plus um, 50% of 800, you can see that's going to be 625, but that's, you know, it's going to be much less because you rounded up. So I'm kind of, you know, this is like an art, right? So some of you might be like, I wouldn't do it that way, or nah, that's too much, or now you're getting too complicated. The key, what I'm really showing you here, and I'm kind of thinking out loud, is there's all kinds of different ways to estimate, okay? And there's different situations. Now, if you don't have an actual calculator, but you have a quick, uh, paper and pencil, you might take the extra step to do a little bit of arithmetic. But if you don't have anything, okay, if you're like just you and your brain, you're like 750, you might as well just think of that as 800, because then you can kind of manipulate those numbers. But you're looking for reasonable estimations, not precise answers. And this is a good way too to kind of check your work. When you're doing, when you're given work, or if you're looking at something, you should be like, is that answer reasonable? Does it make sense? And you need to be able to, you know, kind of practice this kind of mental calculation, All right? This is going to come in pretty handy. Um, you know, I know that most of us don't go anywhere without our cell phones, which have awesome calculators on it. But, you know, you might, you know, be facing a, situ a situation where you're like, hmm, you know, don't have my calculator around. I don't have anything around. And I need to kind of, I want to get a sense of the percent here, all right? It happens all the time, whether you're trying to figure out a sale or some other financial situation, you need to be good at estimating, all right? So it's an art form, not a particular science, but um, again, you don't wanna be so overly dependent on your calculator. All right, so hopefully you found some value in this video. I just wanted to show you that, you know, we do talk about mathematics being a precise uh, subject, and it is, but there is room, okay, in real practical life for estimating, and you got to practice this. So try to make it fun. Next time you're around, you see something, you know, try to, try to uh, you know, uh, apply some of this stuff and see how good you can get at estimating, all right? That's very, very good for your thinking, critical thinking, and just kind of working that, that muscle in your brain. All right, so if you found some value in this video, if you enjoyed it or even liked it, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Have hundreds and hundreds of videos, basic to advanced math, all organized in various playlists on my channel. But uh, my best math help will be found by following those links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.